All right, we're rolling. Okay, so you got everybody in a picture. Yep. Cool beans. Okay. All right, good afternoon, folks. This is Bell Geode, and I am here at Flight SimCon with Mr. Stephen Hood from Dovetail Games, maker of Flight Sim World. So, first off, thank you so much for agreeing to speak with me. Really do appreciate it. <laughs> I know one of the, the big things that uh, we've been asking about is like communication and so on and so forth. So I really appreciate the, the time, the opportunity to you know, share some of the stuff with the general public. So my good friend Sergio from Heli Summer actually submitted a few questions. None of them are helicopter related. I don't believe <laughs> <So> <laughs> you. That must have been edited, I'm sure. Believe it or not, yes, he actually submitted some pretty interesting questions. So I'm just going to read them off my phone here, and we'll take each one as a short. So the first question that he had was what is the biggest challenge the team had to face to bring FSX to the current state of FSW? I guess it means like the transition. God, the biggest challenge, I mean, trying to pick one individual thing, I'd actually rather group it and say, how do you take technology that is more than 10 years yes, old, yeah. that's been built around uh, machines that existed in that time? Mm -hmm and had no real understanding of what was going to come next. We had to take that legacy technology and then uh, rework the underpinnings in order to deliver a platform that would enable us to deliver on our vision for flight sim. Right. And so we did a bunch of work in the background that nobody really cares about other than the headline things like, oh, making it 64-bit, yeah, it wasn't, yeah. wasn't a five-minute job. You know, trying to integrate new rendering techniques so that the planes look so cool. Right. And we've got new lighting solutions and all sorts. And there are pros and cons that went with that. So I think the real challenge actually was doing all that work internally and the business looking at it and thinking, okay, we've been investing in this for two years. Um, where's all the shiny new stuff and all the airlines and whatnot? But actually we've taken the approach of trying to do things in what we consider to be the right way so that we can deliver on more things that people notice, like the rain beads that came up in an earlier conversation. Yeah. <laughs> people see what's in front of them. They don't care about the technology under the hood. Just give me the new thing. Right. And now we've got that platform, we're going to start delivering on those things thicker faster. Excellent, excellent. That's the kind of stuff that I like to hear. I like the fact that, okay, we started with this code that is so ancient. We're going to get you up to modern day. And then we'll move on from there. That is something people I really talk about you know, the, the legacy code. Why did we start with that? Why didn't you just make a completely new simulator right. from day one? People love that concept as if we're all just ready to start programming the new thing. Yeah, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> the team um, that were newly assembled for Flight Sim World and indeed Flight School before it, none of them were uh, entirely ex as experienced as all the ACES team put together. Mm -hmm. right? So there were some um, uh, experiences and skills that we did have in the team that they didn't have and we right. tried to leverage those. But at the same time, FSX is built on some fantastic tech and fantastic systems that still apply today. Right. So we bought into that and we decided to apply our expertise to upgrading it and preparing it for our ideas in the future. And at the same time, you could deliver a credible flight simulator for early access. Exactly. And that's where we are. That's what we've got. That's one of the things that I've been telling a lot of my viewers in particular is if you're building a house, you don't start with the roof. You start with the foundation. And that's exactly what Dovetail's been doing. I really appreciate that. All right, so moving on to question number two. Was the decision to end flight school something that you had planned already, or were you using it as a test platform for FSW? Um, I wouldn't say that we necessarily planned all along to end it when Flight Simulator World launched. I think our view was that uh, flight school was an initial technology investigation where we got some of the components up on one. We could push it out to the community, push it out to Steam, right. see who interacted with it, who was downloading it, what they were doing, and take that knowledge into Flight Simulator World. And because all of the stuff that existed in flight uh, school mm -hmm. is inherent in Flight Sim World, it makes no sense for us to try and split our resource and maintain right, two of them. Right, to maintain two of them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so what we did was, and I think there was a a good community reaction to this was anybody that had flight school got flights in world. So it's not as if we just tried to terminate one thing and move everybody across the new project yeah. and make them yeah. buy this one. Is if you'd invested with us and came up with us on day one, you're with us in flights in world. And now Flight in World is everything that Flight School was, plus more, so there's no need for that. Everybody's right. now migrated to Flight in World. And that's a very important point too that I want to reiterate because just in the brief time this weekend that I've run into people 
there are still people out there that did purchase flight school but don't even know that they are already eligible for flight school. So I just want to get that point out there, folks. If you did get Dovetail Games Flight School, you can now download Flights in World and you can participate in the early access. All right, so moving on to question number three of six. Uh, what is the biggest challenge you have ahead right now? Um, I think it's picking our next headline feature. So there's a bunch of things that we're going to do as part of our roadmap. Mm -hmm. Many of the things that we haven't made public yet because uh, the team are working on different things, like different things are cooking <laughs> right. the team. Right. So we don't all rush around like a, a herd of sheep onto the next feature. Lots of things are concurrently in development. Okay. And some things tend to naturally fall out faster than others. Or you notice that moment of magic and you go, that is so cool. Let's put more effort into right. bringing this one ahead uh, earlier. So I think the biggest challenge for us now is actually trying to concentrate on one of those big hits of features. Because we're going to have updates that roll out to improve the yeah. 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 improvement yeah. 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 the bugs, adding a greater yeah. yeah. functionality, yeah. and all the things yeah. that we need to do. That's part and parcel of that yeah. life that, uh, that uh, is reinvigorated every week, like mm. a weekly update to the city. But at the same time, well, what's the big thing that's it's Right, what's the big thing that's going I think the big thing that's probably coming up at the moment to, to give you a bit of an exclusive is probably the change in the yeah. other region. Really? So we, we've been modifying a bunch of things uh, from FSX to uh, flight school and then onto flights in world with the lights because, scattering you know, and the lighting in general. And people like the weather and the weather things. And that's great. But I look at it and I think, so, yeah, but that's just a slightly flight better flight than FSA. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I have noticed it is. Sea change. Yeah. So we did that to kind of wrap it up and okay. kind of contain it. Uh, with a view that maybe we need to rely on that if the new solution was um, computationally expensive and people weren't able to run it on the lower end hardware. But it actually turns that the performance is fine as far, and it may get completely replaced. And that's the big thing that we've been looking at right now. So if, if that works out and continues as expected, that will be big headline features. <laughs> but we'll also look at other things like cold and dark stuff and parking slots. And we're trying to bring a bit of imagination to those things as well. I can really care about these feelings that the aircraft is alive and real. It's a real machine that you're trying to operate. And what do you do in a real world? You go through a checklist. You right. care about the checklist. Uh, <laughs> you know, always use a checklist. Right. Right. I've only started you know, okay. learning to fly yeah. late last year. Yeah. And I still go through my checklist. And when I think I've got it now, yeah. I don't know, I skip a couple of things. That's when you go, yeah, that's where things yeah. happen. I forgot right. to take a control lock out or something like that. That checklist matter. So the whole concept of starting with the aircraft and caring about it is what we're working on. And speaking of uh, the weather, uh, one of the things that at least I've been pushing for is the whole real weather engine. Because, you know, in other simulators, of course, that is a major thing. I know. Especially if whatever. I do uh, situational type of videos. I kind of like having the real weather because that just throws that uncertainty in there. So is that something that's going to be coming uh, along with the whole weather engine change? Uh, I, I don't think so because what I'm not going to do is delay the integration of the weather engine okay. into ready just to add the live weather component. What I'll do is, especially as it's early hours, I'll push the weather out when it's good to go as soon as possible and not hold it back. Right, right. Be able to enjoy that and feed it back on it. Then we'll add the other components. And there will be plenty that we do need to add. Okay. But my vision for the real world weather is actually I can, uh, without trying to give anything away, imagine that there is a mode or scenario where it's permanently on and everybody has to enjoy and utilize real weather and plan around it. Yeah, especially so, like in a multiplayer scenario. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, it's going to have a place and it's going to come to the fore. It might not be there and paired with the weather engine when that becomes available. It depends on how quickly they come together. That works for me. All right, so let me see. Uh, what would you say is your biggest achievement thus far in MSW? The one thing that you absolutely want everyone to know that you want. So this I have to get my steam. Just pick one. Just one. <laughs> uh, I think the biggest achievement is really delivery. Uh, flights in one to early access. I mean, that's, I agree with that. <laughs> I started on it a couple of years ago, and there was me, and a couple of days later, it leaked over. There's just two. 
room. It's in a room going, oh, we're going to make a flight when we're big uh, Where do we start? What do we do? <laughs> so the whole thing has been rapidly put together. We've you know, brought the brightest minds in that we've got some and we're still growing the team. Mm -hmm. So what we've done from zero to two years later with early access, I'm going to be proud of. And right. I think that should be an indication to the community that we're not finished with this yet. Yeah. If we can do this in 24 months, no, I was looking online. and then we can do it in other. Yes, that makes a lot of sense, and I support you on that one. Okay, and uh, in how many phases are you planning to release this stuff from the VA right now, and then airliners and then helicopters, for example? I guess I did mention helicopters. What's the general roadmap? Which honestly, I don't even expect. To um, I'm guessing he means adding uh, different aircraft. Okay, so um, the roadmap for adding aircraft, I think there's a natural progression that you want to experience as yeah. a student pilot yeah. who Did you know the well? white aircraft yeah, and then really enters the world I mean, of the air. And there's a natural progression, the progression up to so, you know, commercial pilots, um, right. uh, larger yeah, twins, multi-engine props, yeah, turbines, all sorts of things, and then into jet so and so airline business. Yeah. Uh, uh, that's uh, how I see it progressing. But that there's flexibility in the sense that it very much depends on what third parties are coming in. Some third parties are just testing the water and seeing what to push some stuff in occasionally, that's fine. You might find that other business when I want to dive in, they want to put the effort on the work without developing the site, because it's a two-way process at the moment. We're trying to educate them on what they need to do in order to maximize the new technology and infrastructure when they're content. So if somebody turns up and says, look, I'm going to throw my team into it, I'm not going to hold it back. So it's partly dovetail trying to lead this roadmap on. This is how we expand the experience, expect the features to progress, mm -hmm. but it's up to the parties now quickly and they can get to the That makes sense. That makes sense. All right, so my last question for you. I don't even know if this is really a question, but the community has a lot of mixed feelings right now, and several members are skeptical, he has in brackets, some aggressively so, or just plain mad. <laughs> what would you like to say to these people, I'm guessing to reassure them that you are in fact on the right track? But that's, that's kind of a broad question, isn't it? It is. Lots of, it is. Lots of keyboard warriors out there who you know, have opinions on things. And that's fine. We've all got opinions. Mm -hmm. um, and I think uh, hopefully people can at least appreciate the fact that it's more dovetail of being quite professional about the whole thing. And the reason that we don't respond to everything, or if a third party says something and post things in a public forum, some of the things are which are true and some things which are wrong, we don't jump in there and try to correct everybody on that. And we don't try to force correct on every conversation because it really doesn't matter a great deal what we say because it's words. Mm -hmm. Some of us can just yeah. talk and talk and talk and not just go on and on and on. Right. What matters is the product. the product and the progress that we deliver. You know, we've been building up these past two years and there was the brief example of what we're up to the flight mm -hmm. But really all people have had to go on is you know, occasional interviews and the things that we post up somewhere, yeah, and exactly. screenshots. Now we've got the product in early access. Judge it on the progress of early access. Right. So you will see change. I don't mind if people were really, really against what they were doing for whatever reason may be. They may There's always going to be haters. Yeah, exactly. But they may have read something somewhere on the front before mm. that's completely wrong. And then assumed that and they spread that knowledge. And right. So, you know, the dovetail and they work with third parties or they're going to own all your content and give you 3% of the profits. <laughs> I don't know where they got that one from. Do you know what I mean? It's like, and all of that stuff is just noise. And people um, in the company can, you know, become annoyed about it because you know it's incorrect. Mm -hmm. I keep saying to them, it doesn't matter. That's just the noise. Let's just keep <laughs> doing what we're doing. Right. And when we get to tomorrow. I just wanted that we were coming to stop in and say hi. Right I saw your uh, Twitch stream. Because we are changing things the way that we yeah, serve. And that's why I was one of the winners. FSW oh, into the platform right. stage. <laughs> and what we're going to do with the old add ons, so the new right. technology, yeah. the ways of, uh, of uh, doing my, my my some of Some of those things are modifying ever so slightly. Uh, yeah. But the modifying of is that we want to expand flight simulation, create a similar platform for the future, and trust us, we'll get there. I understand that it's early release. And yeah, I understand that. Honestly, 
I think one thing that, just as a suggestion like that might go far, it would be if you yourself actually have like maybe a monthly vlog or something, just an informal impromptu thing, you don't have to give any dates or, or any of that kind of stuff, just kind of a... Um, how would you describe that? I guess uh, just the news blur or something like that. Just something to say, hey guys, checking in. I've thought about that. I mean, Dovetail as a whole can probably um, get together and organise that. <coughs> if it's me personally, then 99% of my waking hours is just focused on what we do with the news, where right. the coin scene is coming from, and how we're writing so. And I love that. That's what keeps me going. The fact that it fits in the whole scene. The idea that I've work. had is uh, instead of us trying to organize badges and uh, maybe I'll just do a guest the, panel or yeah. all the things that light up guest panel and things every week. Yeah. So um, you know, we can be thrown to the lions and, that will and you can ask us those questions <laughs> and wag your finger <laughs> however you need to. <laughs> and I am there to answer those things for you, which okay. will be most useful because there's a lot of assumptions that are made and then we can't wait for folks in common once a year to meet up and exactly. spell the rumors, can we? So <laughs> maybe we do that more frequently. That would be a great idea. But listen, hey, that's all the questions that I had, so I want to thank you so much thank you. for taking the time to speak uh, with me, and uh, one time for the sim. Yes. You know, the first thing I did was put the Tomcat in there, it had to be done. It was you that did the top five. It had to be done. <laughs> but yes, I'm really, really looking forward to the progress that you're making the ability and to go all the add-ons and so on that are going to be coming uh, in, in the we'll, future. We'll, 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 we'll get to helicopters as soon as we can. Sounds good to me. Sergio, you heard it here first. Encouragement. <laughs> folks, my name is Andrew Gordon. I'm signing off. I'll get some comments online. Be back with some more Flight Sim Con. Ciao. Real quick.